Lines and planes. There are a lot of questions you can ask about lines and planes. Here are some of them. These questions could involve intersections and angles and distances, and we can answer these questions using the tools we've developed in previous lectures, such as dot products and cross products and lengths. So we're going to answer as many of these questions as we can in the next 15 minutes. So we're going to go quickly. Let's begin. First question, does a point lie on a line? Well, you've got an equation of a line. This particular equation is given in vector form. We have the coordinates of a point. To check if this point lies on this line, rewrite the equation of your line in parametric form and set each coordinate equal to the value. Determine if there's a single t value, which makes all these equations true. If there is one t value, then yes, the point does lie on the line. If you set up your equations and set them equal to the coordinates of a point, and you're not able to find a single time, that means there's no time at which it simultaneously achieves these three coordinates. So no solution means the point does not lie on the line. How far away is a point from a given line? In other words, if you drop a perpendicular from this point to this line, what is the length? Well, there's a couple of ways we could calculate this. Since this is a right triangle, the length of this side can be calculated as the sine of the angle times the length of the hypotenuse, which is the length of this vector, pq. Now to calculate the sine of the angle, in order to use this formula, we can use a fact about sines. In particular, you can calculate it using lengths and cross products. Substituting this expression in here gives us a formula for the length of the opposite side, in other words, a formula for the distance between this point and this line. Down here, we've worked out an example. You have your point. Choose any point on this line. Using the intercept makes it pretty easy. And then a vector going in the direction of the line. That's just the direction vector, or slope vector. Calculate its length. Calculate the cross product. Here we're using determinants. Once you have the cross product, you'll need its length as well. And the formula says quotient of lengths gives you the distance from this point to this line. But what is that closest point on the line where you attain that distance? In other words, here's my point Q. When you drop the perpendicular, at what point does it hit the line? Well, to calculate this, we use a couple of facts. This perpendicular forms a right angle with the line, so we know a certain dot product is zero. We'll write the point, which we don't know, as x, y, z. Calculate the vector Q, r using subtraction. Do a dot product, and we get an equation in terms of x, y, and z. Now also, this point lies on this line, so it satisfies the three parametric equations according to this line, these equations here. So we can insert these equations into the x, y, z equation we just attained, solve for t. That value of t is the time at which you hit this particular point. You could substitute that t value into your equation for the line. That'll give you the coordinates of the point. To check that this is correct, you can calculate the distance between the points Q and R, once you have coordinates for both, and the value you get for this distance should be equal to the value we previously calculated for the distance. Since mathematics is consistent, you should get the same answer. Next question we could ask, do two lines intersect? Given the equations of two lines, what we'll do is we want to find a time at which the first line intersects the second line. So we'll set the x-coordinates equal, the y-coordinates equal. We'll try to solve for these two times, t1 and t2. Now, if the two lines do in fact intersect, then substituting these values into their respective lines should give us the same point. And in fact, it does. All the coordinates match, so these two lines intersect. Now, it is possible that two lines don't intersect. You set up the equation, similarly as before, you take your set of parametric equations for each line, set the x-coordinates equal, set the y-coordinates equal. You have two equations with two unknowns. Solve for your parameter values and check to see if those lines attain the same points. So substitute in these two. You'll notice the z-coordinates are different, so two lines do not intersect. Now, if two lines do intersect, one question you could ask is, what's the angle between those lines? What you do is take a look at the direction that each line is traveling in, and then you calculate the angle between them using properties of the dot product. 
If your lines don't intersect, there's a couple of questions you could ask. Are the lines parallel? Do they have the same slope? Or are they skew, meaning they don't intersect and they don't have the same slope? Well, we know that two lines are parallel and their direction vectors are multiples of each other. So we ask if this vector is a constant multiple of this vector. And if you can solve for C and find a value which works, they are. But in this case, there's no solution, so the lines aren't parallel. We call those lines skew. Now, two lines which don't intersect. You could ask, what's the distance between those lines? Well, here's the idea. Take your two lines and draw a plane containing each line, two planes which are parallel. To determine those planes, well, we need to calculate a normal vector. Take the cross product of the directions of each line, and that gives you the normal vector for each plane. Pick a point lying on each line, say the intercepts. Now, if you draw a vector between those two points, the length of that vector isn't necessarily the shortest distance between the two lines. However, if you take this line segment and project it onto the normal vector, the normal vector is perpendicular to both planes, so the projection will have the shortest distance. So we want the length of the projection. We don't need the entire projection formula, just the part consisting of the length. And that gives us a formula for the distance between these two lines. Another question you might ask, does a point lie on a plane? This is relatively straightforward. The equation of a plane is in x, y, and z coordinates. A point is given by x, y, and z values. You just substitute in and see if these values satisfy the equation. If it does, then your point is on the plane. If you substitute and the sides are not equal, then the point is not on the plane. And if your point is not on the plane, you can still calculate the distance from the point to the plane. The idea is similar to something we've recently seen. Take your point and also choose a second point, a point on the plane. Any point you like, pick a value for two of the coordinates and calculate the third using the equation of the plane. So I've got my point on the plane. Subtract to calculate a vector between these two points. Now again, the length of that vector isn't necessarily the distance from the point to the plane because this vector isn't orthogonal. So we project it onto the normal vector for the plane, and the length of the projection is in fact the distance from the point to the plane, which we calculate down here. You might have noticed that here we're getting a negative number for your projection. That might strike you as odd. How can it have a negative distance? Well, the negative number simply indicates that, in this case, the normal vector was on the opposite side from this point. So in that case, we just take the absolute value and realize that this would be a better picture for that situation. Now that we know the distance, another question we might ask, the closest point on a plane to a given point not on that plane. Well, the idea, again, we have our vector qr. If we project it, and this time actually find the vector, not just the length, but the full-on vector, that vector points directly down to the plane. We can take that vector and we can add the projection to our point Q. That will give us the point S, the closest point on the plane. We can check to make sure the S is on the plane by substituting the coordinates into the equation of the plane. And that should work out. We can also check, as a triple check, from Q to S, what's that distance? In other words, we can calculate the length of the vector QS. That length should, in fact, be the distance from Q to the plane, which we calculated earlier. Another question, does a line intersect a plane? Well, you get the equation of a plane, the equation of a line. Convert it if it's in vector form or symmetric form to parametric form. So you have everything in terms of x, y, and z. Substitute those values into the equation of the plane and try to solve for your t. If you can find a solution, the number of solutions tells you how many times it intersects. One solution means you can find one point at which the line intersects the plane. Down here we have a second equation of a line to determine if this line intersects the plane. Again, we'll rewrite it in parametric form, substitute it into the equation of the plane, and try to solve. Notice here that we just get a true statement at the end. It's true for all values of t. t just drops out of the equation. Therefore, all t values satisfy this equation, 
every point on the line intersects the plane. In other words, the line is contained within the plane. So you might have one solution, you might have infinitely many solutions. The final case you might run into, here's the equation of a line, convert it to parametric form, substitute into the equation of the plane, and notice, again, t drops out, and you're left with an equation which is false. In this case, no value of t will give you a solution. In other words, there are no intersections. No points on the line lie on the plane. Now, if your line and plane do intersect, you could calculate the angle of intersection. To calculate an angle, we're going to use our properties of the dot product again. We just need to come up with two vectors. Let's say our line L and our plane P intersect at the point Q. We'll choose a point on our line and create the vector QR. Now with that vector, take that vector and project it onto the normal vector. That'll give us a vector which points from the plane to R. So we'll subtract to get the point directly underneath R. We'll call that S. S is R minus this vector. Brings us straight down. Then we can create a second vector from Q to S. And then the angle between the line and the plane is the angle between these two vectors. You can calculate that cosine using the dot product. What if your line and plane don't intersect? Every point on the line is equidistant from the plane. So choose any point on your line, any point on your plane. Create a vector and then project it onto the normal vector to the plane. Then the length of the projection gives you your distance. Now questions just about planes. If you're given two planes, could you come up with their intersection? The line of intersection between two planes. Two lines intersect in a point. In general, two planes, if they intersect, will intersect in a line. So the idea here is you work with these two equations, you try to combine them, you try to eliminate a variable. Doesn't matter which variable you eliminate, then we'll solve for one of the two variables. Now I'm going to take this equation for z, plug it back into one of my original equations, and try to solve for the variable which has not yet appeared, in this case y. Then I've got both z in terms of x. I also have y in terms of x. To write the equation of the line, what I'll do is I'll set x equal to t. Now y is in terms of x, and since x is in terms of t, I can write y in terms of t. Similarly, z is in terms of x, and x is in terms of t, therefore I could write z in terms of t. So I have parametric equations, and you can convert them to another form. Finally, given two planes, we might want to find the angle of intersection between them. In other words, they intersect, choose a point at which they intersect, draw a line along one plane, a line along the other, and you're interested in finding the angle between them. Well, turns out the angle between these two lines is equal to the angle between the two normal vectors. Each normal vector forms an angle of 90 degrees with a plane, so this angle is basically this angle rotated through 90 degrees. And to calculate the angle between two vectors, we can use the dot product. Now if the planes don't intersect, you could ask how far apart are the planes? In the procedure it might seem familiar. Choose a point on one plane and a point on the other. Draw a vector connecting them. Now since that vector is not perpendicular to the planes, it doesn't necessarily give the shortest distance. So what do we do? We project it onto something which is perpendicular to both planes, the normal vector. Since the planes don't intersect, the planes must be parallel, and the planes share the same normal vector. So the normal vector is perpendicular to both. The length of that projection is the distance between the two planes. 